Welcome to episode 20. This video we're going to be talking about vectors. You can think of these as dynamic arrays. Instead of defining the size statically at compile time, these can grow and shrink throughout the code execution. This is essential if you don't know what size to make an array ahead of time. This video is sponsored by Visual Assist. This is a Visual Studio plugin that enhances IntelliSense and overall features for C Sharp, C, and C++ development. If you're using Visual Studio for this series, then you'll definitely want to use this extension. I'll drop a link for a free trial down below. To describe vectors, we're actually going to start with an array. So if you've been following along, you might have code like this, or you can create this code real quick. The primary difference, well, first off, we're going to include vector, like so. It's going to be very similar to the way you define an array from the standard namespace. You will replace array here with vector, and you can remove the size. Other than that, the code should work exactly the same way. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. No errors, and we get grapes, carrots, lemons displayed in the output. Perfect. So that is your essentials of vectors. However, there's a lot of more useful information. The first thing you should know is that we did not define the size. The next thing you should know is that it can grow in size using a method foods dot push back. So push underscore back. You can pass in another value in here, tortillas. And without changing any of our other code, we should now see that displayed in the output. Lovely. Now this is what's a nice feature of using this type of for loop. We don't have to worry about the size, but even if we had a traditional for loop, it would work fairly similar because there is the size method on a vector. So we will define it like so int i is zero, i is less than foods dot size, and then i plus plus c out foods of i. And we'll throw in an end line there as well. So this will work for vectors as well. And you can see the output will be here twice since we have both those loops running. Now another important difference between vectors and arrays is in how the data can be initialized. So I wanna show you something you can do with vectors, which is actually moving that down and replacing the equals here with a semicolon. So we define the vector and then down here, we will actually assign the value. So foods is assigned this collection of foods. We should be able to run this and get the same output that we were originally getting. This is totally okay with vectors because they're dynamically sized. We can define them without any size up here and then we can assign the initialization later. This cannot be done with standard arrays. So if instead of vector of string, we had string foods, even if we do put the value three here, this assignment is invalid. I'm not entirely sure why it's invalid because I feel that it should work. And even leaving this empty is not going to work either. So with arrays, you can only assign a collection of elements on that first initialization with the declaration. So it would have to look like this, where we take this back to how we had it, like so. And we're not going to be able to use pushback with an array. This syntax is perfectly fine for vectors as well. However, we can also use the collection of elements to assign a value to the vector later on. If you need to define the vector, but you don't have the values yet, you can define it separately. So to bring that back to how we had it, we would say vector of whatever type, let's say string, and then we will remove the square brackets, we create the definition, and then later we can assign a collection of elements. So this will initialize foods with three elements, and later we can add more elements. That is your introduction to vectors, nothing too crazy. They work fairly similar to arrays, just with a little bit more uh, dynamicness. Next video, which is going to be very important, we're going to talk about passing arrays and vectors to functions. If you don't understand this section, there's a very good chance you're going to mess something up. So really highly recommend you watch the next video and not just this video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.